Hi everyone, I'm Amelia and I'm five years old. Hi, I'm Joshe and I'm seven years old. Hey, this is Mommy. What's up everyone, I'm Daddy. And you're listening to It's Movie Night. And this week we watched Arthur Christmas. Sony Pictures Entertainment put out this animation in 2011. It's rated PG and has a runtime of 1 hour and 37 minutes. Some other kid films Sony put out around this time were The Smurfs and The Pirates Band of Misfits. Girls, what would you say this movie's about? Amelia? It's about Santa Claus forgetting a house and also his son needing to deliver the present. That is exactly what this movie's about. The movie's about a boy named Arthur who happens to be Santa's son, and he's the only one who could save Christmas since Santa and his elves forgot to deliver at one house. Some familiar voices. Arthur is voiced by James McAvoy. We know him as Mr. Tumnus from the Chronicles of Narnia, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. He is Nomeo in Nomeo and Juliet, and he plays young Professor Charles Xavier from the most recent X-Men films. Santa is voiced by Jim Broadbent. He is Podclock in The Borrowers. I know him best as Professor Slughorn from the Harry Potter movies. And he is also Mr. Gruber in Paddington 1 and 2. Grand Santa is voiced by Bill Nighy. He is Davy Jones in Pirates of the Caribbean 2 and 3. Whitey in Flushed Away, which was, I think, our favorite character in that movie. Mm -hmm. And he plays Howard Clifford in Detective Pikachu. Steve is voiced by Hugh Laurie. His biggest kid's movie, he is Frederick Little from Stuart Little, Dr. Cockroach, Ph.D. in Monsters vs. Aliens, and Parents, you know him as Dr. House. So something Maddie and I thought was really cool, we didn't notice any of these voices while watching the movie, surprisingly, Um, but when we went to IMDb, a lot of the lead elves are some big names. For example, Robbie Coltrane, who is Hagrid, Joan Cusack, who's Jesse from Toy Story, Reese Darby, who's Nigel in the Jumanji series, Andy Serkis, which, pick one people, Lord of the Rings, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Star Wars, he's in a lot of big franchises. Yes, he's the biggest name out of all of them. The directors of this movie, Sarah Smith, she is one of the directors from Ron's Gone Wrong, a movie we might cover in the future. And then Barry Cook, who's one of the directors of the 1998 animation Mulan. Which is a banger. So this was a first time watch for all four of us. Mommy, what were your first impressions of this movie? One, I was completely shocked that it's from 2011. I can't, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that it's been out that long and we haven't watched it, especially with having children for the last almost eight years. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was the biggest thing um, that surprised me. What about you? I remember having this in our Voodoo account for the longest time, and it was just always something we skipped through. We always go to our classics, our familiar movies for Christmas time, but always hearing that this was a good movie and just, yeah, never watching it. So I'm glad that we finally got to knock it off. I will save some of my critiques for when we're talking through it all, but for the first impressions, it's not a bad movie. No, it's it's one of those movies that I wouldn't mind if the kids put it on again. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So let's talk about some of the characters. So Arthur Christmas. How do we feel about Arthur Christmas? You can't help but love him. He is just pure goodness. He <laughs> is so sweet, and I love that opening scene with him going through all the letters and he's got the pictures of him with Santa on his wall and all the lights and the way his office is decorated. And you could tell that like using the different colored markers when he's writing the letters back, yeah. like he just puts so much love into his work and loves the job that he was given at the North Pole that oh, it's, it's so sincere. Yes, for listeners. So his job at the North Pole is in the mailing room. So he gets all the letters from all the kids to Santa Claus and he has to respond back to them. And he does this job because he had another job before this, but he keeps messing up these jobs. He's not very good at every job he comes to, but he's finally got in the mailing room and he loves it. He's good at it. He's your typical quirky, like, oh no, here comes Arthur. He's uh, hide everything. He's going to knock something over. He's yeah. going to spill something. You know, he's just, he's just quirky. He's the black sheep of, he is. of the North Pole. So Grand Santa, he's cool. We like Bill and I, he, like you had said before, um, but he's definitely caught up in the old times, which is 
a negative in a way this movie because he says some things in this movie that I'm like, oh man, I cringed at a few things. Oh yeah, well I'll get to that too in parental guidance, but <laughs> he is, and he he's just a wild card for the wrong reasons. Like I feel like Grand Santa still is very selfish and upset that his job, if you will, was taken away from him because mm-hmm. he got old, but. That's how it works. It's a family biz, if you will. It's going to get passed down. Yeah, he's very much like, hey, let me do it. And everyone goes, no, you're too old. Like he, It's like when you see an old person trying to take out the garbage. And you're like, what are you doing? Sit down. You're too old. You can't be doing that stuff. But he wants to prove to everyone that he's not too old. He can do these things still. It's, it's a bittersweet thing because part of you is like, oh, you know, poor Grand Santa's just sitting in this room by himself watching the events of Christmas Eve play out. And it's like, yeah, I used to do that with a sleigh and the reindeer. Now you got this big fancy flying machine, the S1, <laughs> yeah. which is cool. I, I, I thought the S1 was a pretty cool concept. We'll get to some cool stuff yeah. in a second. <laughs> so the next character I want to talk about is Bryony. So she is the rapping elf and she is a wonderful character. Do you like her? I like her. I like her spunk. I like how she just kind of overhears what happens about the present and is like, I'm here for you. You know, I'm not in active duty. You know, I'm in the wrapping department, but let me get that for you. Let me make sure it gets there in pristine wrapping condition. I don't want anything to happen this. And she's just, she's helpful. She does whatever she can. And it seems like she's one of the only elves that hasn't said anything condescending towards Arthur. Yes. So she accepts everybody for who they are because she, in a way, is the black sheep as well. I think they had mentioned that she went through a few jobs as well before she finally got to the wrapping department. Yes. So she's kind of like, an outsider she's the arthur of the elves and it's cool that they have this bond together and they both want to get this gift to this kid because this means the world to them to be able to show everyone like hey i'm not just that guy on the outskirts i'm not this girl on the outskirts i can do something that has meaning and it's wonderful These are two people that in the North Pole still understand the true meaning of Christmas. No, no child left behind act going on in (laughs) in the North Pole, because, yeah, even though it's just one kid to Steve, Gwen's going to wake up and her whole world's going to be crushed. And Arthur and Byrony, yes, they 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 are a very great team to make that dream happen. And then last but not least, let's talk about Santa Claus. We've seen Santa Claus in so many different renditions, adaptations of movies during Christmas time. How do you feel about this Santa Claus? So I think this Santa kind of starts to tip the magic a little bit, if you will. He is still Santa. He's still, you know, going around like, oh, you know, good job, everyone. He's not He's not a mean Santa, mm-hmm. but you could tell he's slightly more apathetic in his older age. He's closer to retirement. Everybody thinks this is the year he's going to retire. Um, so the elves do a lot of the heavy lifting. Yes, you could tell that this Santa Claus was probably an awesome Santa Claus, but these Santas, they live longer than a regular human being, and he's gone through this a lot longer than anybody else has. So he probably had his time of shining, and now his older son Steve, who is Arthur's brother, has kind of taken on the more technical side of, you know, making it easier so that Santa could do these things using technology. And maybe the Santa, because he's an older generation, just can't accept that. But this Santa, I think he's good. He does have his tipping side, like you had just mentioned, but it doesn't make him a bad Santa. No, he's just, he, I believe they say that this is his 70th year of being Santa Claus. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what age he started being Santa. You know, what age did he take it from Grand Santa? Um, at one point, they say Grand Santa is 137 years old, I yeah. think. So, yeah, the, it's just his magic's running out. Because you can tell by that picture in Arthur's office that, oh, yeah, he was he was the picture of Santa Claus at one point. But he's just getting old. But I will say, positive about this movie I enjoyed seeing the elves more involved. How you said with the technology and Steve getting, you know, this whole co-ops operation, if Mm. you will. They aren't just at the North Pole, but they help Santa complete this gigantic task of seeing all the kids in the world in one night. Teamwork is needed, and I enjoyed that aspect. Yeah, so most of the time we've always seen Santa with a normal size sleigh, and he has a magic sack, and these presents just appear inside the sack. Well, this Santa has a giant, almost spacecraft. It's like a giant Amazon warehouse, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> so all these elves, they build this stuff in the North Pole, but then they load it all onto this craft, and then it's all coming through 
and there is no magic sack anymore. And it's really cool, like you had said, you know, Steve has this technology that he's using and all these elves, they come down on wires like they're like SWAT teams and they go into these houses and Santa's still there. He's still present. He's giving the orders, but these elves are, you know, knocking out the power, knocking out the alarms. They're making sure that dogs don't get in the way. They're doing just some real covert stuff. And it's really cool. I enjoyed this scene. It was one of my favorite scenes in the movie was the opening of the movie. Oh, yes. And I like seeing how the S1 camouflages. So yeah. it like blends in with the sky. And then once it gets high enough, just the bottom of the ship turns into sky. And yeah. then you could see the red on the top just from, from like below. Like It was just really cool things that they did with it. It was a cool thing. It makes you kind of think this is something that could be plausible. Like maybe this is what he does. This is the current Santa. This is the 2000s and on Santa craft. Of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so speaking of Steve and Santa and this whole team, I did really like seeing the generations of clauses. It's not just one Santa living on forever. And it just makes so much more sense for Santa to be a part of a family business mm -hmm. and have it be passed down rather than just someone who lives forever. Like, I like that. I, I, I enjoy that better than an immortal Santa, St. Nick. <laughs> That was cool. I think that something you had mentioned earlier about Grand Santa watching everything go down. So we had mentioned this opening scene where all these elves are helping out Santa and Grand Santa is kind of sitting in a room. It's almost like the Super Bowl in the North Pole where yes. these people are watching camera footage of Santa's like headgear or something. I'm not sure where the camera's hidden, but they're watching this live of Santa delivering these presents on Christmas Eve. And it's really cool because you're kind of getting like a play-by-play -play type thing because there's a moment where a kid is waking up and they said, oh, there's a waker and Santa's in the room. So they got to be quiet. Well, the present that's there is going to make noise if Santa lifts his head. So they got to take the batteries out. So all the elves have earpieces and they're trying to walk him through of where the batteries are at and do an x-ray of it. So that way you can know exactly where the batteries are on the screwdrivers and you got to take it out. It's a it's a level three or whatever. Like it was a really cool thing that they treat the delivery of presents as the Super Bowl watching it on TV. It was really cool. It's like Super Bowl meets NASA. Because, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because it's like um, all the elves are almost in like this NASA communications room. But going back to Grand Santa, he's in almost like this just living room yeah. with like a TV tray in front of him. And he's just grumbling to himself. He's like, I used to do this with two <laughs> elves and eight reindeer and that's it. And sometimes I lost the elves over the Atlantic. And it's just so like typical old person of like my yeah. day. I walked eight miles to mm -hmm. school. Like, is it? <laughs> Yeah, it was a cool scene. I like that Arthur comes and sits next to Grand Santa as well to watch it with him. Yes, and he's so excited. He's like, isn't this great? And then, of course, Grand Santa's like, bah. <laughs> yeah. So some of the positives that I think are some of the lessons that come in this movie. And one of them is, you know, we had mentioned that they forget to give a present to one of the kids. And that's because Steve is trying to show that he can get it done faster using technology. So one of the lessons I would take from this is that you need to slow down. We tell us to Zosha and Amelia all the time, like, check your work, do a good job. And I know I was told that all the time, but only because I was a bad student, I didn't double check my work. But yeah, slow down, look at what you've done, make sure you got everything covered, don't forget any answers. And that's what they did. They were trying to show off and boast about how great it is. And they forgot one of the kids. And that's a big deal. It is. Faster isn't always better. And it also coincides with a lesson of quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a tortoise in the hair type thing as yep. well. Like, hey, just because you're faster doesn't mean that you're going to win. Nope. Slow and steady wins the race. Absolutely. And then like Mommy had mentioned, all the different generations of Santas, you know, we're getting a family movie. There's problems with each of these Santas thinking that they're better than the other. And then the new generations that are supposed to be coming in to be Santa and figuring that they're better. So... There's a nice moment that is typical. You know it's coming. So it might pull on your heartstrings a little bit, but it's them coming together and realizing that, you know, family is more important than this thing, which is who could be better at doing it. Just come together, use your technology with the old, and we can get it done twice as fast and not be tearing at each other's throats because you want to be better than them. Understanding one another is better than the individual race. So on that note of family, though, I do have some not so great uh, outlooks on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I feel like they ruin Santa a bit. Although I enjoy the Kloss family element, they are not a happy family. 
They're not. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of resentment, jealousy, and anger amongst Santa, Steve, and Grand Santa. Arthur's really the only one that's kind of in his own world and proud of all of them as individuals. But then the rest of them just ignore Arthur, which is crazy because he's so nice. They all seem to think he's a fool and it just isn't the Christmas spirit at all. Um, Is it relatable to see a slightly dysfunctional family? Of course, but Mm -hmm. this is Santa Claus we are talking about. (laughs) He is pure goodness, and it really ruins the magical holly jolly feelings when you think of the big guy in the suit. When you see all these people fighting, when you see them, you know, not caring and seeing the elves do all the work, it's like it shatters it a little bit for me. Yeah. Um, And other than Arthur coming in to save those feelings, I feel like that can be a letdown for kids. Yeah, and one of the biggest things is when Steve, and I believe Santa says it as well, and Grand Santa, they mention, oh, it's just one kid. And the way that that hits you, because they try to play it off as like, oh, the kid's going to think he's on the naughty list. It's okay. But Arthur knows this specific house because he wrote the letters. He knows that this kid is supposed to get a pink sparkly bike. And With he... stabilizers. He knows <laughs> yeah. like she's a good girl. And when you hear Steve and Santa's say it's just one kid, you're like, oh my gosh, it breaks your heart. Because that is not Santa. No. So yeah, it does knock down the Santa peg. Was there anything else in this movie that turned you off? So I think that's something that's going to hurt some of the kids as well as parents. So I'm not very good at understanding accents when people are thick in accents So there was a lot of times that I'm watching this movie and because we didn't have the subtitles on, I had no idea what they were saying. I had to guess most of it. I was think, it was it mainly for Byrony? It was some from Byrony, but even the English, because I think she's Scottish. I yeah, can't tell exactly. Yeah, she definitely got that more like Welsh, thicker accent. To yeah, her. but even the English accents, there were times that I was just completely dumbfounded. I had no idea what was said. So I think that some parents might have problems and kids. I don't know. We didn't ask the girls, so nothing was ever said. Yeah, so it might have just been me. I don't know, but uh, that's something that I think is a negative. And then there's some very serious moments in this movie. And the problem is that they're sporadic and they're in the middle of the fun moments. So it kind of takes you out of what you're watching. And it's disappointing because you're having so much fun. And then they say, oh, no, here's a serious moment. We're going to bring it down. (laughs) Yeah, so that's something that I think that kids will have a problem with. And then we had mentioned as well that Grand Santa is in the old times. He's very much a older generation. And then he made some comments that make you cringe really hard. He makes a comment in particular about women not being able to read. And I was like, whoa, that's that's too far left field, man. I'm not, I don't know about this. Yeah, I, I don't remember the exact context, but I remember the sentence of, yeah, that was back before women were able to read or at some point like that. And it was, yeah, I think all of us went, oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I went over the girls' heads. I'm sure it'll go over any kid's head. But for me, I was like, whoa, that's that's not good. Yeah, it falls into our grown-up stuff for sure. And speaking of grown-up stuff, is there any parental guidance that you'd like to let the parents know? Of course. Uh, So language, there is one use of minor profanity and there's some bullying towards Arthur. He's poked fun of by almost everybody at the North Pole. Violence is all mild cartoon violence of characters being jostled around in the sleigh, falling, coming into contact with a pack of lions, things like that. Um, I would say that Grand Santa is the most violent part of the movie with what he says. He threatens feeding elves to polar bears, harpooning an elf, hitting kids with a bag of sand to knock them out if he had a wake-up alert. (laughs) Um, He's just, again, that older generation for sure. There is also some instances of gun violence towards the sleigh. Poor Evie, man. She, that sleigh takes a beating (laughs) during this movie. And then the rest of our grown-up stuff. There's some mild innuendos, like the way one of the head elves treats Steve um, and gives him a pair of boxers as a present and does some late-night texting. Grand Santa is at it again with mentioning putting whiskey on a child's lips to help them fall asleep. And then another elf mentions a child becoming an alcoholic because of Santa missing her present. Very extreme that from the age of nine, just because she missed a present, that that's going to happen. But it is a sentence that is said. And then cry factor. The very end got me teary eyed. I wouldn't say that I cry cried. Um, It's a moment that you expect to happen, but it's heartwarming nonetheless. And as for an age recommendation, I'm going to say three and up should be fine. It does have some serious parts, but for the most part, I think most kids will have fun with this. There's enough action and animation and, you know, crazy things going on that it'll hold attention. Yeah. 
So Rotten Tomato critics have this movie certified fresh at 92%, which is a thumbs up. Audiences have it at a 77%, which is a thumbs up as well. Let's see how it holds up in our house. Zosha, do you give Arthur Christmas a thumbs up, a thumbs middle, or a thumbs down? Thumbs down. Thumbs down, okay. How about you, Amelia? Thumbs up. A thumbs up. Mommy? I'm going to go thumbs middle. Like I said before, I wouldn't be mad if they put this back on to watch it, but I'm not going to go out of my way to watch this movie again. Okay. What about you, Daddy? I'm going thumbs down. Okay. If I never watch this movie again, I'd be completely happy. All right. <laughs> so we got a nice mix today. <laughs> <laughs> and if any of you would like to add Arthur Christmas to your movie night list, it is currently streaming on Max or available across platforms. And after watching, let us know if you give it thumbs up, thumbs middle, or thumbs down. And when you want to let us know what you think about the movie, please find us on social media. We like to post pictures of us on our movie nights, letting you know what snacks and sweets we're eating. We post a dad joke as well as a sneak peek clip theme to the episode coming out that week. It's a fun place to hang out. Our Facebook is It's Movie Night, and our Instagram is It's Movie Night Pod. Thank you for listening. Join us next week for another movie night. Happy Christmas! Christmas.